June 6, 1944, a day that would be remembered for generations to come. For this day would be the day to decide the victors of World War II, and ultimately, the world. D-Day took place on the beaches of Normandy, south of Britain, and the north coast of France. This coast is where the Allied forces invaded, and the Allies contained powerful world countries, like the United States, France, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union. And to this day, D-Day was ultimately one of the greatest, if not the greatest turning point in history, as it proved American might and began the oppression of Nazi Germany. Who could have led the world to their demise? The soldiers landed on Omaha Beach using LCVP boats, or otherwise known as Higgins boats. Now these boats would be made of wood, except for the metal ramp, along with the outer layer of the boats, which essentially protected most of the soldiers from gunfire. Which weapon, you may ask? Well, possibly the most impressive weapon the Germans had in their arsenal was the MG-42, which was a fastest shooting machine gun in its time, and was able to shoot 1,800 rounds per minute. Curious to hear what this monster sounded like? Well, let's imagine you are a soldier in a sand pit, cover firing for other squadrons, with your comrade Jimmy. You feel vibrations on the sand beneath you, and all you hear is Well, Jimmy's dead. But not only did the Germans had MG-42s, but also had double concrete bunkers supported by miles of barbed wired fence. And if that wasn't enough, the Germans also put all kinds of explosives under the sand from anti-tank mines. Two simple log launchers, the Germans had a very unique and powerful arsenal. Out of the 29 armored vehicles set to the shore, only two remained as a result of the explosives. But thanks to the courageousness and intellectual prowess of the Allied powers, they were able to overcome the Germans. Just weeks before the invasion, Howard Dwight Eisenhower, the leading commander in this operation, had hatched a plan to invade Germany and Normandy. The Germans were tipped by the undercover Allied German sympathizers that the Allies were to invade the Paz de Calais region. And so Hitler moved his German panzer tanks to Paz de Calais, leaving the beaches of Normandy to be exposed. Here is an encouragement speech from Eisenhower to his troops. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. 
Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940-41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home fronts have given us an overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Shortly after this speech, they commenced D-Day, where over 3,000 LCVP boats were set to shore, each boat carrying 36 infantrymen. By the time all boats were set to shore, there was 195,000 troops in total from the Allied side. Paratroopers were also set behind the German lines to aid in flanking the Germans and catching them by surprise. Omaha Beach took hours to capture and the Allies lost 2,400 men. But the Germans, on the other hand, lost around 300,000 men in total. At the end of this battle, the Allies were victorious, and if Hitler hadn't moved his troops to another region, who knows what we would have in the future.